So this uh, interactive proof process, um, there's power in games. Yes. And you've recently you've gotten into, uh, recently, I'm not sure you can correct me, uh, mechanism design. Yeah. Uh, it's just, so it's, I mean, first of all, maybe you can explain what mechanism design is and um, the, the fascinating space of playing with games and designing games. Mechanism design is that you want to, you want a certain behavior to arise, right? If you want to organize, you know, a societal structure or something, you want to have some orderly uh, behavior to arise, right? Because uh, uh, it is important for your goals. But but you know that people, they don't care what my goals are. <laughs> they care about uh, maximizing their utility. So put it crassly, making money. The more money, the, the better, so to speak, right? I'm exaggerating. Self-interest in whatever. Self-interest. In whatever way they So what you want to do is, um, um, uh, ideally, what you want to do is to design a game so that while people play it so to maximize their self-interest, they achieve the social goal and behavior that I want. That is really the best <laughs> type of thing. And it is a very hard science and art to design these games. And it challenges us to actually come up with a solution concept for a way to analyzing the games that need to be broader. And I think when I'm on game theory has developed you know, a bunch of very compelling way to analyze the game, that if the game has a best property, well, you can have a pretty good guarantee that it's going to be played in a given way. Mm -hmm. But as it turns out, and not surprisingly, these tools have a range of action like anything else. All these uh, so-called the technically solution concept, the way to analyze the game, like dominant strategy equilibrium, if something comes to mind, to be very meaningful, uh, but has a limited power. In some sense, the games so that they can be admit such a, a way to be analyzed. It's a very special. specific kind of games and the, the, the rules are set, the constraints are set, the utilities yes. are all set. Yes, you so can if you want stronger. to reason, if uh, there is a way, say, uh, that you can analyze a restricted class of games this way, but most games you know, don't fall into this restricted <laughs> class, then what do I do? Then you need to enlarge a way what a rational player can do. So for instance, uh, in my opinion, at least in some of my, I played with this for a few years and I, uh, I was doing some exoteric things, I'm sure uh, in, uh, in, the, in the space that uh, were, were not exactly mainstream. And then I changed uh, my interest and now I do <laughs> blockchain. But, but what I'm saying for a while I was doing, uh, so for instance, to me is a way in which uh, I designed the game and you don't have the best move for you. Mm -hmm. The best move is the move that is best for you, no matter what the other players are doing. Sometimes a game doesn't have that, okay? It's too much to ask. But I can design the game such a bit, given the option in front of you, say, oh, these are really stupid for me. Take them aside. But these, these are not stupid. So if you design them, the game so that in any combination of non-stupid things that the player can do, mm -hmm. I achieve what I want, I'm done. Yeah. I don't care to find the, the unique equilibrium, I, I don't give a, a, a damn. I want to say, well, as long as you don't do stupid things and nobody else does stupid things, good social things outcome arise, I should be equally happy. Mm -hmm. And so I really believe that um, um, this type of, of uh, analysis you know, is, uh, is possible and uh, as a bigger uh, radius, so it, it reaches um, more games, more classes of games. And, uh, and after that, we have to enlarge it again. And, uh, and it's going to be, we are going to have fun because uh, human behavior can be conceptualized in game. many ways. And uh, it's, it's, it's a long game. Do you have, <laughs> it's a long game. Do you have uh, favorite games that you're looking at now? I mean, I suppose your work with blockchain and Algorand is a kind of game that you're, you, you basically this mechanism design, design the game such that it's scalable, secure and decentralized, right? 
Yes, uh, yes. And very often you have to say, and very and, and you must also design so that the incentives are, uh, are, uh, right. uh, are and tell, tell you the truth, whatever uh, little I learned from my venture in uh, mechanism design is that incentives are very hard to design because people are very complex creatures. And so, and so somehow the way we design algorithm is a totally different way, essentially with no incentives, essentially. <laughs> and, um, um, and, um, and, um, but, but technically speaking, there is a notion that uh, uh, is actually believable, right? Uh, so that to say, um, people want to maximize their utility. Yes, up to a point. Let me, let me tell you. Assume that if you are honest, you make 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. But if you are dishonest, no matter how dishonest you are, you can only make 100 bucks and one cent. Mm -hmm. What are you going to be? I'm saying, you know what? Technically speaking, even that one cent, but nobody bothers and say, yeah. how much am I going to make by honest 100? If I'm devious and if I'm a criminal, 100 bucks and one cent. You know, I might as well be honest, okay? Mm -hmm. So that essentially is called, you know, Epsilon utility equilibrium, but uh, I, I think like it's, it. it's, it's good. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and that's what we design. Essentially means that, you know, the reason uh, having no incentives is actually a good thing because it prevent people from reasoning how else I'm going to game the system. Mm -hmm. But why can we achieve in Algorand to have no incentives and in Bitcoin instead yet to pay the miners because they do a tremendous amount of work? Because if you have to do a lot of work, then you demand to be paid accordingly. Because mm -hmm. you, right? But if I'm going to say, you have to add two and two equal to four, how much you want to me pay for this? Or if you don't give me this, I don't add the two and two. I would say, you can add two and two in your sleep. You don't need to be paid to add the two and two. So the idea is that if we make the system so efficient, so that generating the next block is so damn simple, it doesn't hit the universe, let alone my computer, let alone it takes a microsecond of computation, I might as well not re being received incentives for doing that and try to incentivize some other part of the system, but not the main consensus, which is a mechanism for generating and adding block to the chain.